This is part two of creating a grouped frequency table. And just to review what we've already done in part one, I said that in step one, we collected all of the marks for 12 children. In step two, we put all of the marks in order from smallest to largest, the smallest being 10 and the largest being 19. In step three, we then subtracted. We took 19 and we subtracted 10, so we took the highest number and subtracted the smallest number and that left us with nine. We went to step four, and in this step, I said that you need to select how many groups you want to have in your grouped frequency table. And for this example, I picked six, but as I said, you could pick seven, eight, four, three, it's up to you. In step five, we had to do some division. We had to take the answer we got in step three, which was nine, and we had to divide it by the number of groups that we had decided we wanted to use. So it was nine divided by six leaves us with 1.5, which I explained in part one, we rounded up to two. If you can't remember why we rounded to two, then you should review the part one video. In step six, we created the table, and we had decided that in the first group, the first mark would be 10, because it's the first mark in our ordered list from smallest to largest in step two. And the next mark would be 11. And all of our groups have two marks in them, and then we calculated how many students had each of those marks for each group. So in group one, for marks 10 and 11, we saw that three students had 10 or 11 for a mark. In group two, for uh, 12 or 13, we saw that two students got the mark 12 or 13. Okay, so now we have worked our way to step seven, which is to create the bar graph. Now, generally, in grouped frequency tables, <clears throat> the first column, this column here, is usually the column which is used on the x-axis, usually, but I have seen cases where it's not true, but uh, usually the first column is for the x-axis, and the second column is the y-axis. So let's see how that works on our graph. You can see that I've started a graph here. I have the y-axis, I have the x-axis, and I have zero uh, at the origin. The first group that I have made is 10 and 11. So the marks 10 and 11, and we already know that three students had the marks 10 and 11. So I've drawn my bar up to three and then back down again. Now, you'll also see that on the x-axis, the label is results, okay? And so you can see that these are the results. These are the marks that the children got, so these are the results. All right, and on the y-axis, we've labeled it students because these numbers along the side here tell us how many students got that mark. All right, so let's do the next bar, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's have a look at group two. Group two has marks between 12, including 12 and 13, and there are two students with the marks 12 or 13. So, we write 12, 2, 13, and we know that two students got that mark, so we draw our bar up to 2 and then back down. Okay, and then we can color it in, and that's our second bar. And basically, that's how you fill in the rest of the bar graph. Take